Hello and welcome. Last week or so I put up a video on an encoded multi-item sorter. This video I've got an improved design, it's a little bit smaller, it's a little bit more flexible. So let's have a look at what it does. So here we have some items we're going to sort. We've got some items that do not stack. We have some items that stack but only to 16. We have some items we want to put in our um, reserved slot multi-item sorter that we don't generally have a lot of but we get now and again. And we have some other items that we do want to have in our encoded sorter. Some items that we haven't got an encoding for. And we also have some shocker box bolts, both with items and empty. So let's grab all of this and chuck it in the sorter. So to sort our items, we just go over to our input chest. No need to be particular. We can chuck it all in at any order. And what will happen is anything that's not stackable will come here. Um, items that can stack to 16 will be put into this chest. We have some encoded slots, so things from the nether or various types of sand or sandstone. And then finally anything that's not, you know, non-stackable, 16 stackable or encoded will come to these chests here and we'll try to go into a slot if it's empty. If it can't go into the first chest, it'll try the second chest and so forth. So we can hear that it's clicking along now, which means some of the items should start coming through now. Uh, let's see, we've got our first non-stackable, we've got some of our 16 stackable, we've got some of our cobblestone items, some of our stone, none of the sandstone yet, but some of our deep slate and some of our nether stuff. And we might also have some of our reserved slot items and none of our overflow yet. So how does this all work? Well, it's all based on top of this four tick dropper clock. So basically we have a dropper, watch by comparator, managing a torch, over a note block, and then from there we just have some observers running around for a four tick clock, plus a couple of other observers to put the pulse into the dropper. Now this is used in a couple of different ways. It's used in Samus the Sage's design for a reserved slot multi-item sorter. I will not go into detail here, but you can go over to his video to see how it's made. Very, very briefly though, um, it'll try to move the item from here to here and then, in, you know, two ticks later we'll pulse this one and try to put it in the chest. Otherwise, the hopper takes it and moves it to the next slice. We also use it for our encoded sorter. So the encoded sorter is two wide tileable. Um, it's essentially the same. We do a four tick clock and every four ticks will move an item from this dropper up because it's directly powered to come to this one and then Two ticks later, this dropper is powered, so it's essentially the same thing, just a different path. This means that this item will have the item in it for two ticks though. And what this means is this compiler will see it and a number of things will happen. First thing that will happen is the sampling hopper, so rather the filter hopper will be unlocked. So this will try to move an item from the filter into the sample hopper. So if there's no item here, um, it's never unlocked because it'll only unlock when there's been an item here. However, if there was an item here, the item we're sampling will be here already. If it's redstone, we can move a piece of redstone from here to here. But if it's anything else, this filter item will not move over. And then one tick later, it'll release this hopper and it'll try to move the item back. So if the redstone moved over, it'll come over and back. Otherwise, if it's not redstone in this particular filter, um, it will stay there because it can't move into the filter chest. All of this means that for one tick, we'll have the item we want in this hopper. And then, you know, a tick after that. So first tick over here, second tick back there. And then the third tick, this is released and the whole system is moved through. That tick is long enough for this comparator to move an item up from here, which releases that comparator. So that when this hopper is released, the item, instead of coming over to this Next slice will instead drop into our filter chest. So pretty straightforward. Um, the main things to remember is that needs to be on two ticks. This needs to be on subtract mode. You do need one item in these barrels. Um, they're barrels so that we can tile it across again and again. And in this hopper here, you need um, five, 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 and six items, so 21 items. They don't have to be named special. They'll never move if the system's working correctly, so you don't have to name them or anything with an anvil. Um, but you do need them to be different from what's in your filter. So if you're filtering for sticks, then they can't be sticks, otherwise they can be sticks. And then in here, you need exactly one of each of the items you want to filter for. 
no more, no less. You can't have any empty slots. And that's it. That's the encoding. It allows you to encode up to five items. Um, and it's tileable, is hopper speed, and is pretty quiet. Now there's a slight variation for when we're doing the non-stackable items. So we don't actually have a filter hopper when we're doing non-stackables, but the approach is the same. So if we're looking for things that stack to 16, for example, um, we'd still have, you know, 21 items in here. And that way when the egg gets in here, it's enough on its own to move that to two and trigger it to be filtered. The main difference is because uh, we don't have the filter chest, we need to drop this from two to one so that that holds it less. So the item is only in here for one tick. Um, but because we've also done that, we need to speed this up a little bit. So instead of using an observer here, we just run the redstone directly over the hopper instead. It achieves the same thing, but it does mean the system's a little bit longer in this direction. So that's how we do our non-stackable and our um, stacking to 16. Some of the other parts of the system is we've got a part to separate out our shulkers. So again, we have our four tick clock, dropper clock, but instead of shooting the item up, it shoots across to another dropper, which attempts to put it in a shulker. Shulkers can't go in shulkers, so it'll get stuck here and be sent down that way. Whereas if it can go in a shulker, so anything that's not a shulker, will come this path instead. Uh, finally, we have our, well not finally, but getting close, we have our shulker unloader. So basically, as items come into this dispenser, um, the compounder clock will start. So this is a five tick clock. The reason it's a five tick clock is we've got a torch involved and we don't want to burn the torch out. So this will start a five tick clock. This means that first that torch turns off, releasing that piston and releasing this hopper. And then also what happens is this observer will fire this dispenser putting the shulker box there. If there's items in the shulker box, this compounder will hold the clock to keep the torch off and keep the system ready to unload all the items until the shulker is empty, at which point the piston pushes the item, pushes the shulker over to this hopper, shulkers go this way, and when this um, piston is fired, this torch that fires the piston also powers this block locking this hopper, preventing the shocker box from following all the items that just came out of it. Again, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, just to make sure you've got that in subtract mode in case that ever fills up. And make sure you have that on four ticks because otherwise it won't have enough time to, well, it could either burn out the torch or it won't actually finish unloading the shocker box. It'll just get a couple of items and push it out. And this last one is not really part of the whole design, but it's um, used in the system as a whole. This is just a dropper elevator. So items come into this dropper. That compounder sees them. It should be in subtract mode. This is just a little two tick on, two tick off clock. So that every two ticks, the items pushed up from that dropper and these observers carry the signal upwards. I like this design simply because while it is a little bit bigger than some other dropper elevator designs, um, it's completely silent and you can build it to whatever height you want. You don't actually have to plan ahead you know, which way your torch towers are going to go. So let's have a look at it all put together. So we have our input chest just here. We run two lines of hoppers out here. Um, you don't have to, but it does help in making sure that you pull the items out of there a little bit faster. That comes to our dropper tower. This is the dropper elevator we talked about before. It brings the items up and over our shulker separator. Now I've moved the shulker box around to the side here instead of over there and this is simply just to bring it a little bit closer to the um, sorting slice. So if it's not a shulker box it'll go into that shulker and then come into our sorting line. If it is a shulker box it comes its other direction into a little bit of a buffer. Now the reason we have a buffer here is um, uh, we don't want the system to ever back up. So everything's hopper speed and you can back up in the bottom of the elevator, that's fine. The elevator will, you know, quite happily be overloaded and then still send items up. But if you get overloaded here, you can have a problem with the droppers and sometimes you might get items stuck in here. So you don't ever want this to back up. Now, because everything's hopper speed, that shouldn't be a problem, except for the shulker boxes. So we give ourselves a little bit of a buffer so we can store a lot of shulker boxes ready to be unloaded here. That comes into our shulker unloader. Now, our shulker unloader, um, it's happy to be backed up, like if items can't come out of the shulker box, they'll just sit here waiting to come out when they can. 
so that's not a problem um, same here if the shulkers pushed over and that can't take it well it'll just sit there until you take some shulkers away um, now the reason we take the items from the shulker box and feed them back into this elevator is because the elevator can handle being backed up so by putting it here we make sure that you know we're not really worried about how many items are being unloaded here and here we're unloading at double hopper speed now because we've got items that might be in the input directly and shulker, and shulker boxes so we just let it back up to the bottom of the elevator so that we don't cause any problems it does mean that the items in the shulker box will travel up the elevator once in the shulker box and then once after they've been unloaded from the shulker box so again out of a shulker box now so now it's coming this way this is our first of our two separators so this is our non-stackable item separator because we've only got one stick in here instead of the uh, 21 that you normally have it means that an egg's not quite enough like a 16th stackable item is not quite enough to trigger it so eggs will come through but shovels and swords won't this is our 16 stackable item slice so anything that stacks to 16 will get caught here because we've got 21 items in this separator design and then we come over to our um, encoded sorter so our encoding is under these repeaters um, and you know uh, that one is for slice 1, for slice 2, slice 3, slice 4, slice 5 and slice 6 so the items come through these encoded multi item sorters one by one if they get to the end we just take them around and into the input of the um, slices faced in the other direction and if they manage to make it all the way through here and they're not in any of the encodings then they just come to this hopper line here drop down and into the start of the reserved slot multi item sorter slices these are one weight sliceable so it's slice 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 um, and if you ever get to the end of that then you've got a problem because you've got more items than you can either multi item sort or encode so basically if you use this system you know if these chests at the end start filling up you need to make your system a bit bigger now if you want to make your system a bit bigger that's not a problem you just add more slices so you take that hopper line away and add slice 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 as much as you need and then put the hopper line from here to here back in again and you're good to go with the bigger system so that's the whole design um, I'm just going to have another look in these chests just to show you that everything did sort so there's our four eggs there's our four shovels these are the four spruce but yeah spruce saplings we put in those are the 16 items that weren't part of the encoding that just went over into the overflow um, as you can see we have our items all in here as well and that's about the whole design thank you for watching I know there's no block by block tutorial, however I'd hope that the design is simple enough that having seen both sides of each of the slices, both the one wide tileable slices and the two wide tileable slices, that it's pretty obvious how you build it, I have talked through the design. If anybody does want me to go into a little bit more detail on any part of this system, just ask in the comments below for me to do a bit more of a tutorial on one part of the system or another, I'm happy to do so. Um, or better yet, you know, record your own block by block tutorial for others and I'll link it in the description. Thank you for watching. Cheers.